Thanks, Eric. Um, by the way, that was vice chairman, not chairman. Uh, it's reflected in my paycheck. It's not. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I have been involved with this uh, program, um, this course of study for some 15 years now. Uh, like John said, preceded uh, the actual uh, academic uh, degree. And um, there are probably several reasons for that. One is, you know, that's who I am. That's, that's my genetic code. I, I build products, have my whole life, um, that's what I do. Make things that you can kick, and when you do kick them, you, you, your, toe, your toe hurts. Um, and that's, you know, I think that is a, a important for, you know, we still all live in a physical world, even though there's a lot of uh, virtual stuff that, that we're involved in. Uh, at the end of the day, we're, we're still in a physical world. So I think that's an important thing has been, and I think as I'll show, you know, probably even more important moving forward. Uh, the second thing is, um, it, you know, you, you get some great output from uh, this program, and I'll talk a, a little bit about that. Um, so, uh, let's see. Everybody can see this uh, picture in front of you, right? What, what is it? A, a truck. A pickup truck, right? Uh, that was a 1990 F-Series F-150 Ford pickup truck. And I had the privilege of leading the F-150 uh, business team for several years in the mid-90s, and that's when I became involved with, with MPD. That was a, a, a best-selling truck for Ford Motor Company, very profitable for many, many years. Um, and but it was what it, what you see. It was a pickup truck. It was kind of a workman's tool. It came in two flavors: the standard cab and an extended cab. And once we got involved with the, the precursor to MPD, and we had some students. And you know, John was there. Uh, Craig Vogel, Laurie Weingart, who I, I saw earlier, was was part of that team. Uh, came out to Ford, and we said, well, you know, how do we engage the students to kind of help us think through what this could look like. And, you know, somewhere there uh, in the 2000 time frame, uh, a lot of work was done to go and, and, and research uh, what, what is the lifestyle of these owners? And, and, and more importantly, what else is out there that's broader than the current owner base? And so, you know, uh, the, the team came up uh, w with the students' help with these five categories, and it's not just a work truck, right? There were several other segments, and, and so today you look at what the S-Series represents. There, there are 10 different models, and they hit all those different lifestyle segments. And you can see, you know, in an era where the pickup truck reigned supreme, you know, trucks in general reign supreme, uh, the volume went up, uh, and and then, uh, went down a little bit, but again, reflecting the reality of the current environment uh, of fuel economy laws and regulations, etc. So still, the very profitable product line for Ford Motor Company and, and you know, huge uh, volume. So it shows how you can evolve if you, if you think differently, and you know, the MPD program and its precursors sure, sure helped us uh, do that. Later in life, when I went to Navistar, uh, we did this uh, program, and Megan, you know, who's my co-panelist here today, was actually one of the classes that was involved in this project at its outset. Um, and she, you know, we were talking last night, she was part of a, a team that went and researched the lifestyle of truckers, including driving from, what, Bangor, Maine to some, you know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And you know, <laughs> being in, in the cab, seeing what these uh, people live like, and, and extracting from that, what could it be? And that's always a question you have in the product world, is what can it be, not what it is. Uh, and from that came this, in the, not only exterior design, but the interior design, which ended up being kind of more important, uh, almost, than the exterior. And you, you know, I don't think anyone who, who, who saw that bottom right-hand picture by itself would say that's a truck interior. 
but, but, it, but it is. And, and again, this, this has been a great brand burnisher for uh, Navistar and for you know, the trucking industry in, in total. But now as, as we look forward, right, you know, why, why am I so passionate about products and making stuff? And, and why, do, why, am I, why do I think that the training and the teaching of those tools is imperative? These are some macroeconomic statistics. You know, you've probably seen them in different guises at different times. Uh, and you know, there's, everyone kind of knows the rest of the world in terms of GDP growth is catching up to the United States and in and, and actual uh, uh, percentage terms uh, have, have surpassed the US uh, performance and especially in recent years. We also are all aware, very aware in the US of our our huge fiscal deficit growing and you know kind of no end in sight I know there's a new budget out uh, recently I haven't studied it entirely um, but I tell you I don't see anything that says this trend gets reversed very easily when you have these kind of two phenomena you get the third stagnant incomes right for most of the last decade and actually declining in recent years. Um, so you have this kind of stagnation of wealth, but a redistribution. And you hear about this, you know, in the, in the political arena all the time. You know, the top 10% that's represented by this wealthy line have increased their share of the overall uh, pot at the expense of kind of the middle class. Um, and this is a, a, a slide that I like because it shows all the money is going to the financial companies. Uh, you know, there's been a huge explosion in that arena and a move, movement of wealth to it. Uh, at the same time, manufacturing, the stuff that I, I talk about products and producing products, making stuff that uh, you can kick, has, has gone down as a percentage of GDP. And that's may, maybe okay, but if you look at our key uh, competitors, and you know, this is a global economy now, like Eric says, they're not in that mode. And you know, especially if you look at uh, you know, burgeoning uh, markets like China and Korea, even Germany, long time, you know, uh, wealthy country, right? They're they're in in recent years increasing their percent of uh, GDP as far as manufacturing, and you know no matter what what you uh, think about manufacturing in in general still pays well and, and better th than the average. And kind of the kicker to all this is, well, if you don't make stuff, you got to bring it in from elsewhere. And so you send a lot of your wealth over overseas. Now maybe I shouldn't worry about these global borders and stuff, but I, I tell you, other countries sure do. So if we don't, you know, it's 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 you know, it's unknown what happens. So you know, what what does MPD do in in my view? Why why I'm passionate about it? It's the only program I have seen that kind of focuses on training the next generation of leaders to make stuff. And, you know, and, and that's, a, that's a very you know, involved, complex uh, question. You know, the creativity part of it, you know, kind of the uh, getting it uh, to be real, you know, developing it, building a factory if that's what, what it entails. That's, a, that's hard work, takes a long time, not very sexy. So how do you teach that? I haven't seen anywhere uh, else where that, there's a focus on that as much as MPD. And I think the engagement of MPD with real world companies kind of helps the practice side of that and, and gives a sense of reality and a sense of purpose to the education. This is a slide that I stole from somewhere, Deloitte. 
uh, not KPMG. Uh, <coughs> uh, but you know, the stuff on the left, right? I, I was staring at this, and most of the stuff on the left, in some one fashion or another, is touched upon in MPD. And, and, and certainly when the kids come and work with companies, you know, they get exposure to it and they have to work in that. And, and to, that's an important skill set. So, you know, where do you take MPD? You know, I've talked to John a lot and I know he's written books and he may write some more books. I mean, I think if you take MPD to a place where this becomes the standard for the world on where to get these kinds of skills and these kinds of leaders, that is a huge thing. And as, as kind of an example, you know, I went and did some research at a leading name brand business school in the, in the courses they were offering. This is not Tepper, Bob, by the way, so. Um, but you know, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't find anything close. The closest thing I found was this last category, and as I looked at the details of it, it really wasn't about creating, crafting, building. It was more about the, the mechanics. You know, how, how, how do you uh, run a digital company? Stuff like that. <clears throat> so uh, th there's, a, there's a gap. There, there's certainly a, a, a hole out there in terms of preparing uh, people for this. And typically, you know, kids have co come into companies and they kind of grow it internally, but there's an opportunity to change that paradigm. So my last slide <clears throat> is, you know, as, 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 I look, as you look at all of these pieces of data that I've shown you, right, um, and you see it already in, in, the, in the U.S., in, in the budget that's been presented, and certainly in the, the turmoil, I call it, in Washington, D.C., is you know, we've got all of these uh, tectonic forces in front of us. You know, the fiscal deficit, the trade deficit, we're not creating wealth anymore, we're not, we're not growing the middle class, it's creating political pressure. We've got this, uh, you know, the next generation, my kids, will take over a debt burden that they're gonna resent when they get to be conscious about it and think about it and, and see how much they gotta pay out to support dad's old lifestyle. And there's gonna be political consequences. It's, it's inevitable. So how do you get out of this? The only way I know of, and maybe I'm a little bit of a you know, dinosaur in this thinking, is to grow. And to grow the economy and grow the country back. And I mean like four or five percent, not the anemic two percent, which barely, I don't think it keeps up with inflation and population growth even. Um, and that to me means, you know, making stuff, doing the complicated heavy lifting of crafting, building better than anyone else. Doesn't mean you have to go back to making, you know, coat hangers or something, but you, you have to devise new products, new technologies, new, new ways of, of manufacturing, and then, and, and then do it in the United States. I think it's very, very possible, uh, and you see the, the beginning signs of some of that. And I think that's the only way to kind of get out of this little bit of a, a, a quagmire we're in. So, that's my pitch, and I'm sticking with it, so.